Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe, especially since this is the last day of 2023. It is December 31st and I am filming this before I head out for the night. I'm headed over to my family's house and I figured this is the perfect video to end the year on. Hopefully I can get it edited and posted in time, but I did want to go ahead and film my favorites video for 2023. So these are all my favorite products that I tried, discovered, and used in 2023. And I have a list, okay? I have a list. I have checked it, probably not twice, but I have like a whole list, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's two pages long and I'm hoping to get through this pretty quickly. But yeah, we should be fine. So hopefully you guys, again, are staying safe. You have a very happy, happy new year. And I will see you guys in the new year, right? We're gonna have fun. Again, we're gonna continue 2024 the way we have 2023. We're just gonna continue having a great time here on this channel. So, all right, wait, wait, wait. Before, before I jump into the favorites, okay? Can I show you my outfit? I don't know if I'm actually wearing this because like I said, I'm going over to my family's house. So I don't know if I'll wear this, but let me let me show you, okay? Because you're probably like, what's going on? Okay, ah, what is going on? Stop it right now. Can you stand my little chain link top? Stop, stop. So this is from... Aeropostel? Do you say Aeropostel or Aeropostel? Either way. That's where this top is from. The back of it is like a little, you know what I'm saying? Like a little chain link detail and then you clip it in the back kind of how you would do a necklace, right? I save this for New Year's Eve. I don't really wear a lot of silver so for me to wear this, it's a whole situation. And I'm wearing nipple covers under this so you don't see my whole boob because it is like it's not see-through but it's not opaque it's literally this chain type of material you see it this little mesh it's metal so it's cold but we'll see we'll see all right now let's jump into the favorites all right and i want to start this favorites off with two things that are not beauty related at all but I have to mention them because I use them so consistently the whole year that it's only right that I include them in this favorites video. So the first one are these glasses from Moi Jim. Oh, whoo, child. I went in store, I went to a sunglass hut, right? You know, you know, as you do, because I wanted some sunglasses. I was going on vacation and I needed new sunglasses to wear. And I was looking for a special pair and I happened upon these. Are you ready? Girl, girl, shut up, shut up right now. Stop the presses. Do not play with me. Do not put. Y'all, do not play with me right now. Can you stand it? First of all, the lenses, fantastic. But what I really love about these sunglasses is how thin they are. Ultra thin frames and they are really lightweight. So if you're a runner, you're a sports person, I think Maui Jim makes some fantastic sunglasses that are perfect because they're very lightweight. And what I love even more about this specific pair is how it fits my face and how it feels. Like it's a nice simple style, right? Nothing crazy, but the lenses, uh, yes. Oh my God, so I am so in love with these glasses. I have to share them. I have to clean them though, cause they're, they're messy. And I've worn them so often, like consistently, vacations, just running errands, whatever, because they can go from dressy to casual really easily. And like I said, they're lightweight, they're comfortable to wear. They're pricey, but I feel like they're in line with other high-end brands, so. I love them. I really, really love them. And I got another pair recently because I wanted a more casual pair that was brown. So loving Maui Jim. All right. Next up is something that I've also traveled with on vacation. Used it so much. Oh my God. This is my sleep mask. This was sent to me, but I was eyeing it for a while because it's one of those ads that pop up on Instagram, right? And I'm like, ooh, I love a sleep mask. So I cannot go to sleep without a sleep mask because I need complete darkness. 
<laughs> Listen, I sleep in darkness and it needs to be quiet as well. So I do have a fan running, but other than that, it needs to be quiet, right? So when they reached out to me, I was like, I've seen these before. I wanted to pick them up, but when I went on the website, they were so expensive. It's like $170 for this. And I'm like, ooh, that's tricky. And they were like, you know, choose any one you want to try out. And I'm like, really? And so I grabbed the sound one. So this is the Manta Sleep Sound. And they have regular ones that are just a plain sleep mask. They also have weighted ones, which I think is really helpful for those people that need like a weighted sleep mask, you know, to kind of soothe you to sleep. They also have like the silk insert. So what's great about this? All right. So it wraps around your head, right? And it has a Velcro attachment so you don't have to worry about stretching it out it's not an elastic right you actually wrap it around your head and then you secure it with the with the velcro right but what i love about this particular one is that it has little headphones at the side i know so what i usually do is sleep with my phone under my pillow so i can listen to videos while i go to sleep i'll listen to an audiobook or i'll listen to a video and I'll fall asleep to it. And I find that's the easiest way to get me to fall asleep. Within 15 minutes, I'm out, right? So I set a timer on my Audible and go to sleep or I'll just play a video, right? Now with these, I don't have to put my phone under my pillow. My phone can sit on my nightstand while I have these on. So this connects to your phone, it's Bluetooth and the headphones are right on the side, right on the side. And you can move them so you can move them to the back or to the front because they have this little this little tab right here perfect right because if I want to get less sound I just move it to the back if I want it like full on then I move it to the front and they have removable eye cups right so they came with their own eye cups but I went ahead and purchased the silk ones so it goes around your eye so if you have lashes or anything I know lashes are a big thing but this cups around your eye so it's not laying flat and crushing your eye which I think is key because I've had other masks that lay flat and they're a little bit uncomfortable these like frame and cup your eyes so it blocks out the light but then it's really comfortable for your eyelashes and everything right it has the little shape here for your nose and it has the controls in the front right so the power button to turn on and off the Bluetooth right and then this also turns on and off or stops your content. So you can pause and play with the power button. Then you have the volume controls for plus and minus. And it's lightweight, so it's not this heavy duty situation that I have to lug around. It's not noise canceling, so don't expect that, right? It's not going to be. But I even wear these on the plane to listen to my audiobooks again, listen to videos and go to sleep because really comfortable. I sleep in these every night lightweight and and the last thing i'll say is that it comes apart so you can wash it because you should be washing your eye mask because if you have skincare and whatever left on your face muck guck and yuck you want to go ahead and wash your eye masks and i usually wash the little eye cups a little bit more frequently than i wash the actual mask but you remove the audio part right so this shouldn't get wet because obviously this has electronics in it but again velcro and then you can wash this little part that actually goes on your skin so i love this eye mask and i had to mention it even though it's not a beauty favorite i had to mention it and it charges with a is this a lightning cable I think no it's USB-C so it charges with a USB-C perfect love it and the charge lasts forever okay weeks upon weeks you a full charge will last you for weeks so you don't have to worry about recharging it too much so I've loved it I've used it for the full year and I have zero complaints and as pricey as it is I would buy it again if that one ever broke I'm buying it again <laughs> hands down without a question all right now let's move on to beauty, right? Because that's what you're really here for. But I really needed to tell you about those two things, okay? Had to, had to, had to. All right, let me go to my list. And what I'm going to do is speak about these products in the order that I would apply them to my face because that would make more sense, give a little structure and organization to the video, 
and keep me on track, all right? So let's start with brows because I do my brows before anything else. And I have two brow pencils that I've used consistently the whole year. And I believe both of them I discovered this year. This one for sure. So this is from Make Beauty. It is their Blade Line Brow Pencil. I use the shade Cool Brown. They have an assortment of shades to choose from. And these are also refillable. It has a spoolie on one side, right? And then the actual brow blade. And this is one of those blade type pencils, right? So it's a larger shape. And I love this because I can just fill in and shade in my brows like I would with a brow powder. And I don't necessarily use this for the full outline, but I will use it to fill in the sparse areas. And I find that it works really quickly because of the shape of it. And I love the formula because it's not too creamy where it slides around like an eyeliner pencil, but it's not too dry where it tugs against my eyebrow hairs. Have you ever had that where you have a brow pencil that's so stiff and dry that as you're applying it, it's like pulling out your brow hairs? Like, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing, right? So it's that right consistency that you need for applying it to your brows. So I absolutely love it. And like I said, it's refillable. So you can just buy the little insert, which I have, and pop it into your pencil so it's a little bit more hmm should I say environmentally friendly kind of I guess right but it's more pocket friendly as well because the refills are gonna be cheaper right and then I have the Patrick Ta major brow defining pencil the shade I use is dark brown now this I use in tandem with the make beauty blade line because this one now is a ultra fine point it also has kind of a blade shape but it's much thinner and much smaller so I can get detailed application with this one. If I wanted to create fine brush strokes through my brows, I can do that. Or if I wanted to get a really sharp line, which is what I use it for, is to really crisp up the shape. I am not one of those people that does the fluffy brows. I'm never gonna be. Mm -mm. My brows, I've always done them this way always whether that's with a brow pomade or a brow pencil or a brow powder it's always going to be a defined brow for me okay and this pencil excellent and it also has a spoolie on one side and i absolutely love this even though it's a little bit pricey i love it so much that i have four in rotation right now don't ask me why i think i pulled out the two new ones out of my backup somehow when i was cleaning out my drawers and it just accidentally ended up in the drawer Anyway, those are the two brow pencils that I absolutely love. And then for a brow gel, also a discovery this year, is also from Patrick Ta. So this is the Major Brow Lamination Gel. Now, I don't always wear a brow gel. I don't need a brow gel because my brows are well behaved. They stay in place. It's fine, right? And any random brow gel will really do for me. But I've really enjoyed this one from Patrick Ta. And I picked this up during a Sephora sale, they were having like buy one, get one 50% off all brow products and this was included so I picked it up. And I really love this because of the brush. So the brush is kind of a comb brush hybrid. It has a little bit of an angle and you can use this to comb through your brows, set everything in place and it holds everything securely. And the formula is more like a gel it's not like a clear mascara it's actually like a little bit of a gel so it's a little stickier but it also doesn't flake so it holds my brow hairs in place now I don't know if you have unruly brow hairs how this will work but for me it works really well and like I said it holds everything in place right it's not too stiff and crunchy and it doesn't flake so I absolutely love that all right, let's go down the list. I feel like we should also talk about mascara because I feel like it's one of those go-to basic products that you always use in a look, even though I'm skipping over all the other steps. But let's talk about mascara because I have two that I fell in love with this year. The first one is from Amico Lay. This is their Lash Amplifying Mascara. It's in black. It's beautiful. I love this mascara so much. So it has a smaller one that's a conical shape and it's a nylon bristle which I prefer over plastic bristles and this is so rich it's so volumizing 
but at the same time it's not too wet so it doesn't get messy and it lasts a long time so I've had it in my collection for a while and it hasn't really dried out and I feel like even as it's drying out it gets better and better as with most mascaras but I love this mascara so much it really hugs the lashes so at the base of your lashes you really can get in there and wiggle through and get the volume I get length I don't necessarily get a curl because I don't need a curl in mascara but as far as volume goes love this so much and I think the brush is ideal for getting into the roots of your lashes right because that's how you're gonna really build volume so you wiggle your brush through and build volume and product on your lashes and this doesn't clump it doesn't flake I love it I absolutely love it and then another one that I discovered this year it was like halfway through the year is the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow Mascara. This is an extra volumizing and lifting mascara. I didn't know what to expect, okay? I just picked this up kind of on a whim. I saw it in store. I think this was during the summer or spring. Sephora. There was a sale. Was it summertime that they had a sale and I picked this up? Not expecting too much, but I like the brush because it's an hourglass shape and it has those shorter bristles, which I'm fine in that that's what I prefer from a mascara one. Short bristles that are gonna hug my lashes. And this one has now plastic bristles instead of the nylon bristles, which I typically don't like. But this mascara, oh my God, I'm so in love. I'm so in love, I had to get a backup. So again, hugs the lash line, adds volume. It's a rich black, it doesn't flake, it doesn't clump, I love it. I wear it so often, it's like neck and neck with the Amico Lay. And I thought the Amico Lay was gonna be like, yeah, ultimate mascara, no. This Huda Beauty really like came in the clutch and I fell absolutely in love with it. All right, let's talk some eyeshadow because we're still dealing with eyes. So one of the eyeshadow products that I also fell in love with kind of later in the year is this Merit Solo Shadow. This debuted this year from Merit and I've heard mixed reviews about these and I am one of the people that love these. I love these. I specifically love this shade, I should say, because maybe I don't love the other shades. I haven't used them enough to say I'm in love, but this shade specifically, which is Vachetta, absolutely in love with it. I'm wearing it right now on my lids. This is a one and done all of a shadow that blanks out my eyelids, kind of like my MAC Lane Low Paint Pot, but I feel like this is a little creamier it gives me a smoother finish, right? And I can wear it just as eyeshadow. I do set it down with powder, but it doesn't crease or bud. So I love this as a My Skin Tone eyeshadow base, a one and done eyeshadow, or like an eyeshadow primer because it works for all those reasons because it is my skin tone. And I love the formula. I thought I wouldn't because when I swatch these in store, they dry down quickly, they feel very dry, and I'm like, oh, these are gonna be awful, but I really fell in love with Vachetta specifically. So definitely loving that cream eyeshadow, even though I've heard like mixed reviews, but that shade, yeah, definitely top of my list, okay. All right, since we brought up cream shadows, let's segue into liquid eyeshadows, which I have been enjoying a little bit more these days. Cream and liquid eyeshadows, I'm not like the biggest fan of because it's like working with them is a little tricky sometimes, but the more and more I get into like just one and done shadow looks or a very soft look, the more I enjoy liquid and cream eyeshadows. And this brand I tried out for the first time this year, but they've already been around, right? I'm just discovering them. So this is About Face, I think that's Halsey, is it Halsey? I don't know, it's one of them celebrities. However, these liquid, what are they called? Fluid eye paints. I went in store at Ulta, they were having like a buy one, get one situation. It was a, it was a situation, all right? And I decided to pick up a couple of them to try out and I went back and picked up like a full set. So they're right there, like the full set of them because I fell in love with these, the nude shades, right? So the ultimate one that I found is called Smell Before Rain. This is a nudie brown one, right? The packaging is this soft touch material, which I absolutely love. And then we have a little bit of a flat paddle style doe foot applicator. 
right? Nice. So this shade is like a nudie taupe. Really beautiful for my skin tone. Again, like a nude look. And then we also have Capulets. This is another one that I love. This one is more peach toned, which actually works really well for my skin tone. Then we have Cloned, which is like a warm brown. Again, great for creating some dimension on the eye. And when I tell you my eyesight is doing well because I can read these, this is weightless. These little labels on the bottom i don't know who these are for but if you're over 40 good luck but i can read them just fine so it is what it is but these four shades in particular create this beautiful dimensional look on my lid so i definitely recommend the neutral shades for sure they make great eyeshadow bases as well you can again use them for a one and done look or you can use them to build a little bit of a dimension on your eye that's gonna be very soft, you know? It's not gonna be intense and too punchy. And I think these are easy to work with. They don't dry down too quickly. They're easy to manipulate. It's not fussy at all, which is what I found with liquid eyeshadows. These are just nice. And it's more like a drier liquid, right? So it's not runny at all. It's almost like a moussey liquid. So it's, again, easy to work with. So absolutely love those. All right. Eyeshadow palettes. All right, I'm gonna start out with the neutrals because that's what it was all about for me. The nude palettes just took me by surprise this year and I fell in love with this one. This one came out, I think, the end of last year because I think I picked it up last year. I may have even mentioned it in the favorites video that I did. I don't know if I did, but it's getting mentioned again because this palette went with me everywhere, okay? It's the Coffee Shop palette from Juvia's Place. This, oh my god, their coffee shop collection, hands down one of the best collections of the year. So this is a neutral palette. That is the neutral palette of my dreams. It has all the shades that I need, right? Deepening shades, medium shades for building dimension. Then I have shimmers that are taupey. I have like more bronzy tones. I have like deeper shades and a copper and then warmer browns and cool tone browns. And I have the ivory for the highlight. I have everything I need in this palette. It is the ultimate palette. The only thing I wish was that it was smaller so I could travel with it a little easier because it's a little wide, you know? It doesn't fit easily in like a travel makeup bag. It's not the most travel friendly. So that's the only drawback, but I still packed it, girl. I still found a way to travel with it. So didn't even matter about the size because I was still putting this in my travel bag. So this ultimate neutral palette of the year until we got the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette. I about lost my mind when I saw this reveal, okay? Woo child! This is an all matte palette from Patrick Ta and I have been requesting this from Patrick Ta, okay? So his other palettes, the Major Dimension 1 and 2, fine. I decluttered one, right? But I kept two because I really liked the mattes in that. And then the shimmers were really nice as well. And then he was like, oh, I'm gonna give you all mattes, girl. And I'm like, for me, <laughs> you shouldn't have. Oh my God, I love you so much. So I had to get this. And once I got it in my hands, it was just like, game over. I'm in love. I am in love. This is one that I also traveled with a lot because it's the perfect all matte palette. Again, I have warm tones, light tones, medium tones, deep thin shades. I have this black that's not too overwhelming so I can use it to deepen up a look, but it's not going to take it over, you know? And then I have these darker browns, like the two little cream shades that again, I don't really use, but you can use these as eyeshadow bases because I find his cream eyeshadows to be really great on my lids, like they're not too emollient, right? This just works really well. And the formula, ultra silky, ultra creamy, easy to blend. Love this, I love this so, so much. All right, this palette is another neutral one, but this one took me by surprise. I didn't expect to love this palette as much as I did. And low key, I kind of hate on this brand, but Tarte. I know, so the Sweet Tarte Cravens palette. This is from their Sugar Rush line. So there's a little offshoot that's like a little sister brand of Tarte. And this little palette that they launched, oh my God, this launched for, I think, Valentine's Day because it's like the little chocolate box theme. These eyeshadows, they smell good. They are really creamy. The shimmers are stunning. 
And I love to kind of mix this in with my all matte palette from Patrick Ta, right? Because we have the shimmers. And these are the silky, like, mineralized, I would say, like, a jelly type of shadow. They are smooth without being chunky or too metallic. And these shades just work really well on my skin tone. So I really fell in love with this palette. And it wasn't too pricey either. So this is a great palette to have in my collection. I have lighter shades for highlighting. I have lid shades. And then I have these deepening shades, which I absolutely love. Is it a one and done like standalone palette? Not necessarily. But... I still absolutely love it. I'll just mix it in with another palette. So yeah, who knew that Tarte was gonna make my favorite as far as an eyeshadow palette goes, right? Like what? What are we talking about, Tarte? Mm -mm. Now, the colorful palettes, let me tell you right now, for the colorful palettes, it all went to one specific brand. And I feel like I may have a little bit of a bias, but I just feel like they knocked it out the park. And I didn't really try that many eyeshadow palettes this year. Let me just get into these palettes, all right? So the Stone and Rock palette from Odin's Eye. If you didn't guess it by now, it's Odin's Eye all the way for colorful palettes. But this, oh, this palette, like, come on. These mattes, these shimmers, the formula is stunning. I love this palette. Such a great, like, green tone palette with browns and neutrals. So, absolutely fell in love with this palette. I didn't use it as much, like, on camera, but off camera, if I was just pulling out, doing a quick look, this is one of the palettes that I would pull for. And... I feel like these were overlooked in the beauty community and they shouldn't have been at all. The other one from that collection is the Jewels and Gems palette, all right? And this one had more cool tone shades, some purpley tones, some mauvey tones. This one, it's okay. I didn't love it as much, but I just wanted to show it. So out of the collection, it would have been the, the Stone and Rock palette for me, hands down. But they also had this one in the collection. And then they released the collaboration palettes with Angie. And I was looking forward to these because I got like a sneak peek. She brought these on our trip to Charleston. She didn't show me the palettes, but she would wear them. And I'll be like, oh my God, what's on your eyes? She's like, and I'm like, oh my God, Angie, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And boom, come on. These shades are so stunning. Like individually, all the mattes are stunning. All the shimmers are stunning. Like, this is a fire palette. Now, the color story may be a little intimidating. So I understand if people were just, like, a little bit wary of this. But, I mean, the shades performed so well. But out of the two palettes, the one that I loved is the Little Ghost palette. So the one I just showed you is the Trick or Treat palette. It was a halloween theme palette. But the one I fell in love with is the Little Ghost palette which has the purples and the blues. This blue is to die for. So this is more my type of color story, but it has like some oranges. It has this bright yellow, this beautiful purple. Like don't play with this palette. This is such a stunning palette. Oh my God, absolutely loved it. And then they went ahead and relaunched my favorite palettes from last year. And I don't even remember if I included these palettes last year because they released again uh, towards the end of the year. I know I spoke about them, but they sold out so quickly that I felt kind of bad mentioning them because you couldn't get your hands on them. But girl, I think they sold out again, all right? So they relaunched them for this year and I really think they sold out again. But more of you were able to get your hands on them. Now my favorite palette from all four of those palettes that launched because they added two new ones in addition to relaunching these was, can you guess it? The Christmas Eve palette. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, so the blue's in this, stunning. We have neutral shades, stunning. We have some purples. We have a couple of like mossy greens. Oh my god, this palette is so stunning, so beautiful. I got so many looks from this palette. I love it so much. And the formulation in these palettes is the ultimate one from Odin's Eye. They've redone their formulas a couple of times, so different palettes will have like a different formula. And these are the creamy, buttery, mattes, and beautiful shimmers. Love them. And then the Christmas palette. I love this too. But this color story is not, you know, as much of a love of mine, but all the shades performed well. Again, 
the greens especially stunning the multi-chrome this shade oh stop and the reds and this brown also very beautiful so I still love this palette I just feel like the Christmas Eve one I'll pull out more but this one also has like some fun greens in it this dark green so pretty I ooh, child, I love these palettes so so much so as far as colorful palettes go Odin's Eye definitely took it for me like the entire year those were just stellar we had back to back like we had a summer launch the holiday launch it was just yes please and then my neutral palettes is where I really like enjoyed myself okay I was having the time of my life I'm going to mention one last thing for eyes and that is a liquid liner I have to mention this even though it didn't debut in 2023 but I used it so much and I loved it so much I have to mention it so this is the Pat McGrath liquid liner I don't even know what the full name is but it's the only liquid liner she has it's a felt tip it's richly black and it's so long lasting and it dries down to a matte finish so it's not shiny it's not satin it's matte and I use it I don't do like a winged eyeliner anymore right so I only use it to line my lash band and with my lash band I want it to be black I want it to be matte I don't want it to shine right and this is so good it's so liquidy it's so rich and I've used it so much but it hasn't dried out it hasn't dried out which I think counts towards why I love it so much because nothing irks me more than a liquid liner that dries out gets like dusty or it doesn't flow as well anymore after a few uses this one is worth the price because it's going to last you a long time so absolutely love 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 this product I have to mention it even though like it's one of those basic products again all right we are done with the eyes can you imagine I didn't try too many products this year when it comes to eyeshadows but I had some winners all right should we move on to the face let's do that so right out the gate I have to mention my Gucci matte primer it's the serum de beauté fluid mattifiant it's the matte primer I love this primer at the start of the year they launched this along with their matte foundation their luminous matte foundation which we'll talk about in a second because it's all her favorite but the primer I was using this religiously religiously you hear me it's such a good primer does it have a scent it's a very light fragrance if anything it's that signature like kind of luxury Gucci fragrance I love it so much it's such a good primer it feels silky on the skin but it's mattifying but it doesn't dry your skin out it's a little bit drier than like a regular primer to be fair so if you have dry skin probably stay away unless you're like into that matte look but this mm, and my foundation lasts it lasts and lasts and lasts and I use this with all kinds of foundation and it has held up I absolutely love it so had to mention this first and foremost then Further in the year, I discovered a little guy called the L'Oreal Prime Lab 24-Hour Matte Setter Primer. They sent this to me, okay? L'Oreal was like, we send a new stuff. So they sent me the full line of primers. So they have a green one, a pore blurring one, and then like a glowy one. Even the glowy one's kind of nice. Anyway, this one I fell in love with, the matte primer. It has 1% LHA and salicylic acid. So it grips makeup, no shine, and it balances your skin because it has that salicylic acid, which my skin loves for breakouts, right? I love this primer so much. I have a backup on a backup because I travel with this one. This keeps my makeup matte. I'm traveling, I need a matte face when I'm working, I'm not trying to be a grease fest, so love this so much. And it's at the drugstore, you can get it on sale, so like, what's there not to love? So I think they did a great job, the L'Oreal line with these primers. Again, they have the green one for color correcting, the blurring one for, so the pink one is the blurring one. This one is a pore minimizer, which also works really well, and I can use these in tandem. But the one, like, I want to talk about this one, because that's the one I really fell in love with. So, yeah, those primers, top-notch, excellent, excellent. Now, later on in the year, I went in store at Ulta, minding my business as you do, swatching and carrying on, and I discovered this primer. Now, this is a basic ass old school brand, so I never truly check out their products, but this, 
I swatched it on my hand for some reason and I fell in love. So this is the Estee Lauder, the Mattifier, Shine Control and Perfecting Primer Plus Finisher. When I tell you this blew me away, it's pricey, right? And it's Estee Lauder, so I'm like, why am I spending that much? I don't want to be bothered. And girl, let me tell you, fan fantastic listen okay i didn't know estee lauder had it going on like that but they do because this primer blew my mind i absolutely fell in love so definitely on my favorites list for 2023 all right that's primer out of the way you know what's next right foundation what do you think my favorite foundations were hmm can you guess? So right out the gate, I already gave this one away. This is the Gucci Eternité de Beauté Luminous Matte Finish Foundation. Oh, this came out with the primer, right? So I bought them together. Love this foundation so much. The shade I have is 360W. Love this. I love this so, so much. It's such a good primer. And I love that they have a decent shade range because there are richer, deeper, darker shades than me in this, like a lot of shades. It's not just one or two. So I love that for them because this is a medium shade. It falls in their medium range, right? So for a higher end brand to have a good foundation shade range, I love that for them, but I love that for us because this foundation is so good. It's so good. And even though it's like, oh, it's pricey, blah, blah, it's worth it. Oh my God long lasting even without the primer right without the primer it still wears really well it looks good on the skin that luminous matte is kind of true because it's a matte finish but it doesn't look dry or flat it just looks good it looks good on the skin fell in love with this love this so so much and then i also discovered some skin tints right so i'm in florida right it's hot i tend to want to wear something more lightweight on my skin and i tried out the amico lay line i tried out their powders the skin tint the mascara like most of the line right and this also blew me away in addition to the mascara right so this is their skin enhancing tint i have shade medium one oh my god fell in love with this all right here's the thing the shade range trash trash don't even get me started it's trash but but however and however okay it's a very lightweight thin product so one shade will work for like multiple shades in the spectrum so it's not limited because it's a thin lightweight coverage right so you don't have to worry about like an exact match and this shade matches me really well. And I feel like a lot of people can still use the shade range, but they don't have like ultra light shades or really, really rich shades. And it's not like very expensive, but the formula, if you can find your shade, let me tell you something, okay? They're a up and coming brand, they're black owned. So I'm putting my support there. The shade range, yeah, we get it, right? But the formula is what really sold me because it feels so comfortable on the skin. It's like, a natural matte finish so it's not glowy or dewy which I stay away from when it comes to like skin tints and tinted moisturizer I'm like no 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 because they're glowy right I don't want that in my life but this is not at all glowy it feels comfortable so I can just do a light wash of it on my skin doesn't feel heavy right a little concealer in my little troublesome spots and boom out the door out the door cute cute wears well I love it right and then another skin tint that blew me away okay auntie danessa so miss danessa myricks released this yummy skin serum skin tint let me tell you something about the yummy skin line hate it <laughs> i hated that stupid foundation so much it was so thick and glowy and dewy and then the primer is glowy oh my god have you ever seen danessa myricks put makeup on herself or on like the models oh my god on her instagram it's just glow and shine and dew and everybody looks lovely, right? Lovely for them, okay? Lovely for all of that. But for me, all I'm seeing is grease and oil and scrape it off my face right now because I don't want that life. No, 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 no. But somehow, after trying the Amico Lay, I was like, all right, I'm going to try this little serum skin tint because I had, I had high hopes. I was like, maybe the skin tint is skin tinting, right? So... <laughs> picked it up love it oh my god the shade i have is 11 did i tell you the mikolay shade this is medium one yeah yeah i told you so love this oh my god it's what i'm wearing right now it's what i'm wearing right now i use this again as a skin tint so a light wash like light just to even out my skin just to even out my skin i'm gonna be up all night it's 8 30 right now 
I'm about to be up until midnight, after midnight, right? So I don't need, you know, no problem. So I did a very light layer of this skin tint. I didn't even put it all over my face, just, you know, in some areas and blended it out. I used my Estee Lauder Mattifier Primer. This set for the night because I also powder, which we'll talk about powders in a minute, but powdered down. This is gonna last me all night, right? Did my concealer and I'll show you the concealer in a while, but like the skin tone matches good, the wear is good, like all the things, okay? This is an excellent skin tint, absolutely love that. All right, so speaking of, because I feel like I need to mention this brush, even though it's not like a beauty product, but I'm gonna mention it because I use it with my foundations, right? So it makes sense. The Found Sealer Brush from Tarte. Okay, yeah, Tarte, Tarte, okay? They have this beautiful brush that is the foundation brush of my dreams. I love brushes and I love foundation brushes especially. And this brush, I just love it. It's, it's dirty right now, but it's a round top, right? Like a kabuki, but with a long handle. It's dense yet so soft, so it blends product really well. It's a little bit more difficult to wash because you gotta like scrub it and get in there, but... I love this guy so much so I'm just mentioning it because we mentioned um, foundations and it's on my list because I definitely said that is a good little brush so now let's do the concealers right because that's where it's at so I have concealers that are new to my collection that really blew me away this year I have other concealers that I know and love already but these I added this year and they're new for this year so first one up the Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer from Givenchy. You gotta say it like that, Givenchy. Okay, listen, okay? The shade I have here is N385. I love this concealer so much. And I love the applicator too, oh my god. So it's like a chubby doe foot, right? It feels really comfortable under the eyes and it's a larger size. But it's not oversized like the um, the Tarte Shape Tape, you know that big concealer one? No, it's not like that at all. It's like a happy in-between size. It's not too small, not too large. It's like the Goldilocks size. So I can get enough product under my eyes without having to re-dip, right? A minor thing, but I thought, you know, that's like something to mention as well. And the applicator is really soft. The shade, the formula, it blends really well. It's like a satin matte finish. It looks good on my skin. It wears really well, but it gives me the coverage without looking heavy. It's so stunning. I absolutely love it. And you get a ton of product, even though it's like a pricier concealer, like, oh my God, it's so pricey. But you get 0.37 fluid ounce, which is more than a third of like a full on foundation. So you know, even though it's expensive, it's gonna last you a long time. And I have tons of product left and I've used this so, so much. All right, the next one that I added is a reformulation, right? So it's already existed, it's been in their line, whatever, but they did a reformulation. That is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I have 4.5 N. Let me tell you something, okay? I had this concealer all along, no problem. And they did the reformulation. I said, let me go ahead and try it. And honey, I am so glad I did. I have the old formula, right? Is it the same thing? Yeah, it's the old formula, old packaging. And I like this enough when it just launched. But for some reason, this new formulation, whatever they did, I don't even know if it's a new formulation or just a new tube. I don't know what it is. However, what I'm gonna tell you is I love this. I love this so much. It has a larger doe foot as well, but it has like this angular shape. Like it like, you know, it have like an angle to it, like a tilt. She is nice. And again, I don't have to re-dip. And this shade match, Dior. Dior has my heart when it comes to foundations, complexion products, Dior. If you ask me for a recommendation, if you come to me and you're like, I'm just starting out in makeup, I want a good foundation, Dior. Hands down, that's it, Dior. Dior, without question, because I feel like Dior has such like spot on formulations that you're bound to find one that works for you that you absolutely love. They have matte ones, they have glowy ones, they have skin tints, they have the works, right? I feel like they do complexion products really well. So I'm happy 
to try out the concealer and tell you that the concealer is also really good. Then we had another launch, right? New concealer to the lineup. I was kind of anticipating this as well because I've been watching this brand, right? You already know what it is. It's the House Labs Concealer. So this is their, what is it even called? Oh my goodness. It's a long name, okay? It's their Triclone Skin Tech Hydrating Plus Deep Puffin Concealer with Fermentin Arnica, which they have in most of their complexion products, I say, because I think they have it in their powder and also in their foundation. All right, the foundation didn't fall in love with. It's glowy. It's not for me, okay? The concealer, I was like, all right, when are they going to do a concealer? I'm waiting for them to do a pressed powder. They're going to do a pressed powder next year. I promise you, I know this is coming. I know it. They did blushes. They did highlighters and bronzers. Now it's time for a pressed powder. They have loose powders. The pressed powder is coming. Anyway, the concealer. Okay, I love what they're doing with the brand, by the way. They're like slowly releasing products. They're not flooding the market. They're like, all right, we're taking our time, one at a time. And this concealer, love it. So I have two shades, okay? I have 34 medium golden and 40 medium deep golden. The undertone works for me. It's a golden undertone, but it's not too yellow, which is perfect, right? And this formula, this formula, it's, it's a cup. Is this? It's not glass, right? Can you imagine? It's like hard plastic. But this formula, again, very comfortable. It's a natural finish. It's not like matte or satin or glowy. It's just a natural finish. It just looks good on the skin. It feels comfortable too. And it blends out so well. When I use this the first time, I'm like, blend, 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 done. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? What happened? But the coverage is there. So I'm like, that was excellent. That was so excellent and it feels good on the skin. I love when complexion products feel good on the skin. When I wash them off at the end of the night, my skin should still feel good. And from all the products that I've mentioned so far, my skin always feels great at the end of the night. And I don't know why I'm mentioning that, but this concealer just brought that out. It just feels good on the skin. So definitely loving the concealer. So great launch from House Labs, great launch from Givenchy, and great redo on the Dior. So those are the three concealers that I fell in love with. And I tried quite a few concealers this year, didn't I? But those are the three that really stood out to me as like top notch. All right, let's talk powders now. You guys already know the powder that I love, okay? And it's just a repeat favorite. It's just one of those that I'm always going to mention. And what I really love about this powder is that so many people also love it, right? It's the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I use the shade Pillowy. So many people talk about this powder. If they have dry skin, normal skin, combination, or oily, they all love this powder, which is saying a lot. That one powder can be a favorite for so many different skin types, skin tones, like everybody loves this powder because it sets foundation beautifully without being heavy or cakey. It's a lightweight, like baked powder. It is really a cloud set. It's a setting powder, but it's so lightweight and airy that it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. Again, doesn't look cakey. It's indiscernible almost, and it smooths and blurs the skin as well. And it doesn't change the color of your foundation. It's just, it's just excellent. It's all the good things that you look for in a powder. Blurring, smoothing, not drying, not cakey, sets foundation. It's not mattifying though, so keep that in mind. It's not mattifying at all which I don't necessarily always need a mattifying powder because my primer and my foundation should already be pretty matte. So the powder is just there to set everything in place so I don't transfer and like, you know, cause too much ruckus when it comes to my foundation. But that powder, top notch. But I also discovered another powder this year. It's a loose powder and that is the one size loose powder. Now you're gonna say, oh, they've always had that loose powder, true factual actual okay now i have the translucent which is what they debuted with they also have a deep but this year they added new shades they have a pink one and this one here which is sweet honey this one oh my god so this one is like a lightly tinted honey color but it's not banana yellow you know the banana yellow powder that was all the rage back in the day it's not banana yellow but it has a little bit of a yellow tint so it's a little bit more brightening and lifting but this works perfectly on my tan skin i do have 
warmer like golden undertones it's neutral but golden so a little bit of a warmer powder is gonna look more seamless on my skin the translucent still works right the dark I can't use because it's too deep but the translucent works for me it just kind of lifts and brightens a little bit more than the sweet honey so when the sweet honey debuted I was like perfect because it's the perfect color for my skin without brightening or lifting so it sets makeup down so well my concealer I use it under my eyes to set my concealer it blurs it smooths it's mattifying so if I really want to mattify that's where that comes in right so I'll put that under my eyes around my nose my t-zone where I really get oily and then set the rest of my face with the um the coasters right just buff everything over but that powder from one size Patrick Starr did his thing with that okay he did his thing and I must applaud him yeah yeah love that powder i love it so 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 much all right shall we talk about bronzers yes there are two there are only two okay only two and one's a cream and one's a powder so the cream one i know this one was a midsummer discovery juvia's place this is their bronzing cream Oh, their cream bronzer, bronzing balm, whatever it's called. This little guy from Juvia's Place. Love this. The shade I use is Amber. Now, I've heard people mention this, and I'm going to mention it too. There's a little bit of shimmer in this. However, and I find this with a lot of brands, depending on the shade you pick, it's like they change the formula a little bit because this shade, Amber, it has a little bit of shimmer. Like, the deeper I go into it, the more I use it, there's shimmer. I see the shimmer. But it's not evident on my skin when I apply it. I mean, I guess it adds a little glow, but it's not like chunky shimmer. So don't be afraid of it, right? I don't know how your shade will translate, but mine doesn't have a problem. I love this so much. So love the packaging, first of all. It's just a screw top, little container, but it's so thin. It's like a little um, disc. Awesome, travel friendly, really portable. And it's such a great formula so again it's more of a satin matte finish not completely matte it's not too creamy though so it stays in place it doesn't move around too much it doesn't make me greasy at all it just works so well on my skin it blends in with my foundation with powders it just blends and it just merges with my skin looks really natural it's what I'm wearing right now is it I don't remember what I'm wearing right now probably not but love 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 that and then my powder bronzer is from house labs all right think i may have mentioned this before in my previous favorites but it's the one that i've been using all year so this is their power sculpt velvet bronzer that is true deep level number nine i've used this so much that i went ahead and grabbed level 10 i think for like a deeper bronze in the summertime but this bronzer is so excellent. I love it so, so much. It's again, a really smooth, creamy bronzer. It blends with my skin. It's a perfect color. I just love it so, so much. And they have a pretty decent range as well. So definitely need to give it up for Juvia's Place Bronze and Balm, right? And my House Labs bronzer. House Labs, good for you. Good for you. I feel like you did a good job here. And now that we have bronzers out of the way, how about we talk about blushes? Because that segues into the House Labs blushes. Because these launched, like I said, last year. I'm wearing this one right now. This one is Pomelo Peach. So good. It's so good. The formula of these powders, I don't know what House Labs is doing, but I appreciate it. Let me just put a little bit more because I put more powder on my face. But this oh god these powders like they're silky smooth they're creamy they blend well on the skin they lay really well i still have color like oh my god i love them so so much and the packaging i can't get over it pricey i feel like house labs needs to calm down with the prices i'm gonna say that's why their eyeshadow palettes didn't do well because those were really expensive they went on sale really quick after the holidays 50 percent off and now you can get an extra 20 percent like what but these powders pricey i got every single shade every single shade works for me and i love every single one 
whatever shade you choose just choose okay but pomelo beach i feel like is a very beautiful crossover color that can work for a range of skin tones light skin and then my skin tone so this beautiful natural blush absolutely love this blush but there were so many blushes this year that i fell in love with so we're definitely gonna be on a roll okay so the next blush line that i discovered this year i think they launched this year as well these are from armani beauty they're the luminous silk glow blushes when i tell you i fell in love so the shade i really fell in love with is 30 okay i have another shade so i picked up three shades let's see 30 let's see what 40 is but yeah 40 is also great but 30 is my love okay this is like a peachy blush it is really like a luminous glow but you know what i'm gonna put on some eyes you know too much blush in at a new year but this blush is a beautiful peach what time is it beautiful peach right stunning color but it has a very beautiful natural finish without being dry looking right so along with the house labs blush it's like it just looks good on the skin it looks like a natural skin finish without being glowy like shimmery it just looks healthy on the skin and i love 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 that so armani beauty yes and then and then guess who else came out with some nice blushes dior you know my baby dior so they released these rosy glow blushes they extended the line they had the pale peptobismal pink that went viral on tiktok everybody like went crazy over it and so they were like all right let's ride the wave and extend the line so they added a bunch of shades and the two that i fell in love with absolutely in love both these shades so we have rosewood number 12 which is a very natural looking blush i can wear this every day it's like a natural rosy neutral blush stunning and then the colorful one is cherry number 15. it's not as bright and neon as you think like it looks like it's neon but on the cheeks it's just like a beautiful coral i love that blush so so much so dior Giorgio armani and house labs really hit it out the park but to be fair this was kind of the year of blushes i feel like and a lot of brands came out with new blush formulas and they're all like really good so i have more to go through so let's talk about Too faced i didn't think Too faced would make it in my favorites at all just like tarte but lo and behold here we are these cloud crush blushes these are blurring blushes i have watermelon rain which is this pink Ooh, open up girl oh uh, such a beautiful pink it's a little bit rich in pigmentation and then tequila sunset oh my god tequila sunset is probably the most used one that i have but it's very natural subtle on the skin so beautiful and they claim it's a blurring blush it really is it looks really smooth on the skin and again it melts into the skin and looks natural so i really love these little guys smell good they feel good they lay well on the skin absolutely love them and then a brand i mentioned earlier that i tried this year make beauty so these are their skin mimetic micro suede blushes stunning any of these shades really i did a full video so you can check out what the shades look like on me but celestial rose is like a very neutral blush and then this one is Crimson Sky. I have a couple other shades, but I have them in, yeah, here they are. So they're in this palette. So this one is Amber Glow, which is a stunning one. That's probably one of my favorites. And New Moon. And then this bright pink is Fuchsia Flush. But any of these shades, right? Stunning. So you can buy them in refills to put them in a magnetic palette, or you can buy them in the compacts love these these are really nice as well and make beauty does really decent sales so you can get 20 percent off love those and then a cream blush okay on the market that blew me away auntie danessa again so she released these what are they called the yummy skin balm blushes she's using yummy skin and then this balm thing it's a whole situation because it's like a whole line but the blushes the cream blushes oh my god these are so good so this shade is golden hour stop it now here's the thing these are pigmented so you do have to be light-handed 
And I love that for me because not all brands do pigmented blushes and you need pigmented blushes when you have richer skin. And deep skin, hello, Auntie Dennisa better represent because she has richer skin. So she has to make a blush line that's gonna show up on deeper skin. So I absolutely love her blushes. They're absolutely stunning. So great job to Auntie Danessa. And I think that's gonna, yeah, that's it for our blushes, right? All right, now we're on to lips. And lips again was like a big category for me this year. I feel like lips and blushes like took the market by storm, that everything was viral, everyone was going for lip oils and juicy lips, and then we had the latte lips and the latte look. It was a whole situation, right? So. I fell in love with quite a few lip products this year and I'll start out with Amico Le. Their lip oils like blew my mind this year. The first shade I picked up is the brown one which is, they don't have the name on it but it's like their original shade. I love this so much. It's such a good lip oil. Fell in love so I picked up the clear. You can see I've been using it. Picked up the rose shade which is Bliss. These three my favorites clear the brown one and bliss then they added a red one which is called smitten and then this one was a holiday collection one romance but these three love them so so much fell in love with the line the lip oil is more like a lip gloss lip oil hybrid because it has pigmentation it's glossy and juicy but it's not like a runny thin lip oil right it has that hybrid kind of lip gloss vibe to it absolutely love them and then because i fell in love with those lip oils you know where i went next right you know clarins oh my god clarins what do you do to me so the first one i picked up from clarins was this one this is the honey so these are the lip comfort oils Honey is shade number one. Why wouldn't I get this? Like, you look at this and you're automatically like, I want that on my face right now. And it smells so good. It smells like candy. This, um, you know, the strawberry candy in the little strawberry wrapper. And I fell in love with this one so much that I went back and I'm like, I need more, right? So then I picked up Apricot number five, which is like an orangey tint. This is perfect for the summertime because of that little orangey tint. I wear a lot of like orange tinted, coral tinted products in the summertime. And then of course I had to get chocolate, which was one of the newer shades in the line. So this one is like a brownie shade. Stunning, absolutely love that. So Clarence had my heart when it came to lip oils. And you know, lip oils, we're having fun with the lip oils, but we're not gonna forget the lip glosses. So guess who came in the clutch? Juvia's Place. So this is from their coffee shop collection. They released a line of lip glosses that have coffee names and shades and they smell like coffee, like a caramel latte. These are so good. So I picked up like most of the shades. I picked up so many shades. I fell in love. My favorite shade is Salted Caramel. These are really good for creating that ombre lip effect that I have been wearing, like a nudie lip because they're pigmented, right? So you get the color, but they're still glossy. So salted caramel has been my favorite. And then on the center of my lip to give it like the ombre effect, I'll use the macchiato shade. But any of these shades are really good. They're so good. I love them so much, all of them. Like every last one of them, I picked up every single shade because I was so, in love with them and then here comes summer fridays you guys have heard me go on and on about these lip balms i discovered them like happenstance right i'm in um sephora i'm checking them out i picked up one of the shades which was this one which is vanilla beige it's my most used shade it's the ultimate i would recommend this wholeheartedly 100 percent. but so many people love these and i just collected all the shades I collected all of them. I picked them up because I love them so much and I even got the little travel set because again, I love them so much. So now I have travel sizes, I have the full size. I love them. I feel like they're very comfortable. 
the tubes are a squeeze tube, right? People are like, oh, I don't love the squeeze tube, but I feel like the formula needed the squeeze tube and they're easy to apply. They don't make a mess. They're not overly pigmented where you can't apply them on the go. You know, with lip glosses, sometimes if they're too pigmented, you can't apply them on the go. With these lip balms, they have a tint, but they're not overly pigmented. So they're perfect for applying on the go. So I fell in love with those lip balms. All right, let's talk about the Hourglass Unlocked Satin Cream Lipsticks. These debuted again earlier this year. Fell in love with them. I picked up so many shades and I picked them up during the sale so I could get 20% off. This was during the, um, what sale was that? The spring sale for Sephora. I did a full swatch video for these. So I will link that so you can check them out. But all the nude shades, all the colorful shades, every single shade that I picked up, I loved because their formula is very creamy and rich and it feels silky on the lips. They're lipsticks, but they almost feel like a melted balm because they have that pigment to them. I fell in love with those lipsticks so, so, so much. I, I can't say enough great things about them. And then I did fall in love with a liquid lipstick. And that would be the Fenty Icon Fenty Liquid Lipsticks. I don't know. What are they called? Fenty Beauty Fenty Icon Liquid Lipsticks. Oh, these shades the mvp so when rihanna did the super bowl she was wearing this crazy lipstick i was just like oh my god what is that on her lips and lo and behold it was this so she debuted this shade and i had to pick it up so this one is the mvp is the red she was wearing but she has like a dark brown in the line called breadwinner that i fell in love with as well Love this and then she added shades later on that I also picked up Fireproof is like an orangey shade and then the other shade that I fell in love with is it? Let's see. What is it? HBIC This red between this and NVP like I I'm set like red matte lipsticks set Absolutely so in love with those. Oh my god. Love them so so much and Does that wrap it up? For this video no because I have lip liners hold on let's finish up with the lip liners because I have to talk about them so one size okay one size came out and they were like oh we have lip liners did you know and I'm like no I didn't tell me more so these lip liners oh my god he came out also with these lip gloss liquid lipstick duos I kept this one because I really like the gloss, but the liquid lipstick I can do without. So he needs to do the glosses individually because I love those. But the lip liner, let me tell you about these shades. So Red Dew is my favorite shade. It's like my perfect My Lips But Better lip liner. If I'm just going for a regular nude lipstick, I can use this lip liner. It's so perfect. I'm actually wearing it right now to outline my lips because all I'm wearing is the lip liner and gloss. I didn't even put a lip color on because this lip liner, Rent Dew, so perfect. And then Coin Collector, which is a dark brown, works so well to deepen up the lip, to give that, you know, that darker outline. So stunning. So these lip liners, absolutely had to mention them. And then I do have to mention my Makeup by Mario lip pencils as well because these were really fantastic. My favorite shades would be Milk Chocolate and Dark Chocolate. And I think the other one is Jeff, right? Yeah, these three shades. These are great for nude lips. Perfect. Creates great dimension. Absolutely loving these. And then last up are the Huda Beauty Lip Contours 2.0. So I picked up a rich brown. Oh, why do I have two rich browns? Oh uh, my god, that was useless. And rich brown and warm brown. These lip liners are so, so good. All of them. Like any one of the lines that you pick up. But the rent due from one size is just my perfect go-to now. So that's it, right? Let me check my list. Liners done. I have a couple things that I overlooked. Um, we're gonna leave them out. Should we leave them out? Yeah, we should just leave them out because I think we did a pretty good job finishing everything up, like covering them all. All right, fine. I do have three. All right, let me hurry, hurry and do this. So I do have a couple more eye products that I'll run through really quickly, right? 
Speed. Italian Spritz Palette from Too Faced. Really fell in love with this palette. I didn't expect to. It's one of the colorful ones that I used in the summertime and I really love this formulation. The mattes work really well. The shimmers are great. There's some neutral shades in this palette. It's not all colorful, but even the colorful shades I really love because I love that orange in the crease. This is great for warm tone looks. Absolutely love this. Stellar, stellar product. This Girl On Quad I fell in love with as well. This is Andres Brown. It's a beautiful neutral quad, easy to travel with, has all the shades that I need and this formula, oh my god, it blends itself. It's so unassuming and you're like what is that right but if you just want a quick look this works so well and again blends itself it's an easy everyday palette I fell in love with this and I didn't know girl on had such a great eyeshadow formula so definitely fell in love with that had to mention it Huda Beauty empowered palette oh my god so I fell in love with this one as well such a great nude palette such a great easy palette as well and these shades work so well on my skin tone the only two shades I don't love are the golds, like the yellow golds, but everything else in this palette was really, really well done. And the mattes are just really creamy, buttery, apply well, and I love all the other shimmers. So definitely had to mention this for sure. And then the last thing I will mention to wrap this up are these Giorgio Armani eye tints. So I fell in love with this shade, which is 565. It's like a dark Merlot color. It's so good and I picked up two more shades because I loved it so much. So 30M and 36M, which are nudie shades, again, to build dimension on the eyes. These are really good. Again, I got more into cream and liquid eyeshadows a little bit this year. I didn't expect it, but I really love these. And that is going to wrap up all the products that I have to mention in my favorites list oh my god so there you have it guys those are all my favorite products for 2023 it's a long video but i had a lot to talk about and i made it through without really messing up too bad right <laughs> still had to squeeze in some products at the end but still made it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i hope that you had a very very happy and safe new year I will again see you in 2024. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I will leave links down below in the description box on where you can pick these products up. Those links are going to be affiliate links, right? So if you make a purchase through those links, I will get a small sales commission. It's a great way to show you support for the channel because it helps me to put right back into the content without changing the sale price. So it's like a win-win situation. I also have affiliate codes down below that will give you discount off certain indie brands. So feel free to use those codes and those links at your leisure. If you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop. No must no fuss i'm still happy you're here watching i'm gonna leave links to my instagram and twitter where you can follow me along and until my next video which will be very soon i'll see you in 2024 bye guys